Okay, we're going to uh, download some ESO public plugins and put them into the correct folder. So what you're going to need to do is open two Windows library uh, in Windows. And in one of them, you're going to go to Documents. And then you're going to go to Elder Scrolls Online, Live, and Add-ons. Mine's filled right now because I have a lot of add-ons. You're going to go to your Downloads folder and find your zipped add-on. Just go right in the zipped folder and drag it over. I already have it, but you won't, so you won't have that prompt. Okay, now we're jumping into the game and we're going to fix the settings. I'm jumping on a character that doesn't have any of my mods set up yet. So we're going to see what that looks like. Alright, so we are in the game and what we're going to do, don't just ignore the thing in the middle of the screen. You can go to add-ons. Make sure you have allow um, out-of-date add-ons. I'm just going to hop out of this area real quick as I'm being attacked. Don't worry, we will fix the text in the middle of the screen in just a moment. Alright, so we're going to settings. And as you can see, I do allow out of date. Don't worry, it won't affect your game. In fact, you won't be able to use your add-ons without it. Alright, now we're going to settings and we're going to go to the add-ons. And so I've got a couple. Number one is the toolbar. That's what's in the middle of the screen, so let's fix that first. You can drag that where you would like it, but you have to do the text alignment or it will stay in the center. Alright, um, I usually turn clock right off. I, I don't need that. I also like to turn off the FPS and the ping because I, I just don't need that. I play on a smaller monitor, so for me, I try to conserve space. I don't need zone. Um, character names not on, race or class, don't need any of those. Don't need level, really. Um, what I do like uh, is um, it's the XP, so it's not the experience bar, as you'll see. That is this big green block, but I like to do the XP at a percentage. So percentage earned, and it makes it really easy to tell when you're going to level. Um, I do not need the horse training timer. I just automatically know that that's once a day. Alright, I love the bag space being on. This is an important one for me because it's so easy to get your inventory filled. I just keep the icons to save on space. So yes to soul gems, yes to gold. And again, I usually just keep the icons, but it's up to you. Um, I love to do repair cost as well, so I know if my armor needs to be fixed. I also do the weapon charge bar, so I know that, you know, if I have an enchantment on my weapon, if it's still being used. And so I like mine on the bottom left side of my screen. It just seems to fit better, because as you see, I have a mini-map. Alright, so now let's take a look at some of the mini-map prompts. So I like to make sure in my pins that I have a, uh, quests I can pick up, some lost treasure, stuff like that. It really helps you find quests you don't know about and helps you complete quests as well. So you can, uh, when you hover over most of these options, you can read what it's about or what it, it'll, it'll explain. And then, um, yep, I, I think player and group pins are really important. It's very easy to lose your group members. When I do this, um, you can see there's a lot of options. I usually change my players, like regular members, to bright green because it really sticks out on the yellow. Um, this color doesn't matter as much. If they're dead, you're probably not paying attention to them. And then for group leaders, I usually make them bright yellow because they have a crown on them and it just seems fitting. And again, this, this color doesn't matter as much because if they're dead, you probably don't care. Unless you're a healer and then you might care. Got some more options there. 
Um, there is actually another add-on I use that will uh, make them appear on the regular map. Uh, very bright and vibrant so you can see them. So let's just take a look at Sky Shards real quick. Usually you don't have to change that at all. Um, I don't usually mess around with this either. This just um, consolidates your quests into an easy to use menu. Uh, kind of like World of Warcraft. Um, otherwise you'll only have one quest up at a time and that can be tough. Sometimes you just want to see your, your journal log on the side of your screen. And I will show you what that looks like um, in a bit as well. But yeah, just peek through the options. Alright, so Joe Group. Uh, this is... It'll change the the group menu, basically, on the left side of the screen. I do have the taunt, healer, and DPS changed. So their health bars will look blue if they're DPS, green if they're a healer, and red if they're a tank. Okay, this is for the map pins for your group members. I need this. So, um, as you can see, I have some custom color set for each person. Play with it as you will. Alright, so I just need to get a quest real quick so that you can see the quest add-on at work. So I'm just getting a quest. And then there, see it pops up right on the right side of the screen. I just really like that. It'll separate it by zone. So you don't get confused. So it's very nice. Alright, um, I'm going to show you how to pop up the in-game FPS and latency. As you can see, I just did that. I'm going to move that bar so that you can see it. Now you do it right in the chat menu. There is a settings menu within the game that you can use as well. But I'm just going to type it here. And then, boom, look at that. So if you do want the FPS and ping, I do it that way. Because it's just the in-game. I like to move my chat up um, because you'll see that the items, when you get items, um, I wanted to show you here, but this lizard won't die. <laughs> um, cool. So I usually play on windowed mode. Makes the game run a little bit smoother. Especially if you're on a lower end computer, windowed mode is pretty good. Here are my audio settings and then gameplay. So gameplay. Make sure that in gameplay you have prevent attacking innocence turned on. Or you might get yourself in some trouble. If you want to get in trouble, go for it, but I, I don't. I also make sure to turn on auto loot because I, I just makes the game easier. You can turn auto loot on for stolen items. Just know you might get yourself in trouble by doing that as well. Um, so for now, I'll keep that off. Camera, there's some really cool things in here. You can change your field of view for third person and first person cameras. So for first person I usually have it maxed out and then for third person I usually drag it in because of third person you can use your wheel to actually drag the camera in and out so I just uh, usually turn that in more. As you can see it's kind of messing with it. The first person one you didn't see because I was not in first person mode. Okay, so the interface, you've got some interesting options. I like to see character names. It makes it a lot more immersive when you see players running around instead of seeing their weird user IDs. I also like chat bubbles. It helps me know who's talking, if I'm in a raid or something like that. Alright, and then this is where the latency and frame rate are. So if you don't want to use the trick I did. So I'm going to put that on the top left-hand corner because nothing else really goes up there. It keeps it out of my way. Alright, nameplates. Um, I don't usually have those on too much, maybe for some NPCs. Health bars, I mean, same here. Maybe for the enemies, I, I don't usually have them on for myself. But you can if, if that's what you want. Depends on the experience that you want. There, there's lots of settings just to read through. Don't worry, that was just my little pet. It wasn't an em enemy. <laughs> Alright, I turned profanity filter off. And, um, yeah, you can change colors of stuff. I don't usually don't worry about that. Combat. Now, I really like to keep my ability bar on. And I like to keep my attribute bars on. And I also like to do it by percentage. I don't care about the number, I care about the percentage makes life a little more simple. 
Yep, and uh, the ultimate number is your like ultimate move. I like to do that because um, sometimes it matters. Sometimes it doesn't, but I like it. And then there are buffs and debuffs in this game, like any MMO. Um, I usually will have this on automatic. Um, I'm just going to turn it on always show so you can see it, but the way automatic works is when you're in combat, it'll pop up. When you're not, it won't. So, I mean, even your ability bar, uh, ability bars and health and stamina and whatnot, you can set that to automatic so it only pops up when you're in combat, which makes it very, very immersive. So as you can see, those things right above my health bar, those are um, buffs or debuffs. And I just put a debuff on, on the enemy, as you can see on the top. And there we go. And as you see, I will uh, change this to back to automatic. Okay, so it'll disappear when I'm not in combat. Just the buffs and debuffs. I just like that much better. You see how it faded away just now? And so when I fight, it'll pop up. When I'm done, it'll go away. See, it came back up. And as I kill him, once combat is over, look at that, it'll go away. So real quick, um, we can level up. So we press F and um, you have to press claim on the left hand side to get your attribute points. I didn't do that just yet. I went over to the skills and uh, let's see, I want to put some points into my racial. You should always have all your racials leveled up. Yep. Okay. And then um, I have to actually claim my attribute points because they're like rewards. Boom. Look at that. And then I'm going to go ahead and put them into Magicka for my character. And there's a quick tip.